An aspect of gaming I've fallen well and truly out of touch with is achievement or trophy hunting. As someone who went through high school during the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 generation, I was a massive achievement hunter. When you're a kid with bugger all money, you needed to make your games last as long as they could, and the best way to do that, especially if they were single player only, was to go for all the achievements or trophies. Whether I loved the game or wasn't a big fan, if I had unlocked some trophies or achievements, I was going to try and get them all, whether it was Dark Souls or the way to Doritos Crash Core and I was that sort of gamer for a long time, until I just wasn't. Yeah, when I started working the old 9 to 5, having the money to buy any game I wanted and barely enough time to play them, I started to fall off the trophy and achievement hunting bandwagon, at least to the extreme degree. As I've said in a few videos, if I love a game, I will see what it takes to 100% it, but even then, if it's out of the way, I'll just leave it at that. I still love the sound of a trophy or achievement popping, but I wasn't hunting anymore. That was until I finally played Marvel Spider-Man a few months back. Now, I've already gone over my thoughts on Spider-Man as a game, I think it's phenomenal, but when I was going for that platinum, it ignited something back up in me. I loved going for that prize, that 100% prize, and I looked at my PSN profile, which whilst not my original, I've had for a long, long time, and the amount of platinum trophies I had was embarrassing. I've had this account since 2014, and I had a whopping seven platinums to my name. Granted, some of that can be attributed to 100%ing given games on Xbox or on Steam instead, but still, it just wasn't good enough and with this new motivation, the perfect set of videos stumbled across my timeline. Mystic's 30 Platinums in 30 Days Challenge videos, which are a great watch if you haven't seen them, but he brought up feelings that I could really relate to as a content creator. I have so little time to actually just play games. If it's not for a video or a session with my mates, I am lucky if I play one or two games just for myself. So I figured, why don't I attempt this challenge? It posed the perfect concoction of getting to play a bunch of games, whether they're from my backlog or just games I want to revisit, get way more platinum trophies, hopefully that I'm proud of, but gotta do what you gotta do, and make a video to boot, which if I may toot my own horn, is pretty good. Good enough to get you to hit that like button and subscribe, I think. Unlike Mystic, however, I'd been out of the game for some time now, other than the odd platinum for games like Ghost of Tsushima or Spider-Man. I also only had my PS5 hooked up with my PS3 and Vita in storage, which limited the games I had access to, and before someone comments, no, Australia does not have the PS3 game catalogue on PS5, which is great, well worth forking over the extra cash, am I right? Anyway, the point is, I needed to prep and prep hard. I stumbled into a couple of bumps in the road in this prep phase, namely being... Not every game I wanted to play had a platinum trophy. In fact, out of a list of 45 games I had compiled after hours and hours of scouring the PS Store and the Plus membership catalogs and looking into guides, I had to cut a whopping 25 games from that list because whilst I could still get 100%, it's not a platinum. Annoying as games like Abzu and Soma, amongst so many others, I was really looking forward to finally playing, which I guess I'll just do on my Xbox now. But every game should have a platinum trophy. I mean, it's literally just a trophy to say you got all the other trophies, but I digress. I would eventually come up with 30 games that at the time sounded plausible, just to give myself a rough idea of games to play next, along with two rules for myself. Rule number one, all games in this challenge had to be 0% completion to platinum. There was no minimum platinum time, it could be 30 minutes or 15 hours or whatever, but I couldn't even have one trophy in any of these games before starting the challenge. Rule number two, once a trophy unlocked, I had to stick with the game until I got the platinum. I was allowed to test games, but I had to be quick with my decisions because if I didn't like a game and a trophy had unlocked, it was too late. This rule actually eliminated quite a few games that I won't say were bad 
bad, but I wasn't feeling at the time, like Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 and foreclosed. I played the tutorials and just bailed. They weren't hitting the spot in that brief window. I also had a guideline for myself that I wasn't going to play games that didn't genuinely interest or intrigue me. This challenge can be pretty simple if you just buy the cheap trophy games that solely exist to get platinums, but I promise you, they aren't in this video. That was done after the challenge, and no, I'm not proud of it. There are a few short platinum trophies, but they were games I was interested in checking out for whatever reason. With those rules written up, I bought and downloaded all the games on my list, psyched myself up for the coming month, and on the 7th of October at 10pm, I started the 30 Platinums in 30 Days Challenge. Now day one was a bit of a nothing day for a few reasons. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Reason number one was I still needed to get videos out for the channel, and for some reason I decided to start midway through working on the Modern Warfare 2 retrospective. Bit of a goof on my behalf, but this wouldn't be the last time making a video would prove to make this challenge difficult. I still had time to start playing a game, I just didn't platinum anything in my first 24 hours, which came down to a pretty big oversight and general cockiness. I underestimated just how long 10 hours is. 10 hours seemed like nothing, light work when researching my list of games. I mean, when I'm making my retrospectives, 10 hours is like the dream number. But it wasn't until I actually started playing and trying to balance everything on top of this challenge that I realized if I could play for six hours a day, that was a good day. These 10 hour platinums I'd written down were going to take longer than I thought. So I did have to go back to the drawing board pretty early on to figure out how to best balance these longer platinums and still make good progress. Early on into day two, we achieved our first platinum. It was a Telltale game, but still. Tales from the Borderlands was platinum number one. I started with Tales simply because I wanted to make a video on the game before the next game released later that month. Now my more in-depth thoughts on the game are in that video which I highly recommend watching. That video was a blast to make, but in short, if you haven't played it, go do that. It's incredible and easily Telltale's best game in my humble opinion, as well as a top tier Borderlands experience. In terms of a platinum though, the Telltale games are as easy as they come. Just play the game till the end and boom, the platinum is yours. In regards to this challenge, the Telltale games are time consuming, again taking me more than a day to complete, but we have more than enough days left to make that time up. I wasn't stressing. By the skin of my teeth, I snuck a platinum in here. Not because it was another longer game, but because most of the day I was preoccupied with editing. I did manage to get platinum number two. Ironic, considering I had to choose between achieving the platinum today or releasing the turd that was absolutely just breaking down my butthole. Lara Croft Go. I've had this game on my backlog for some time now, and I've only heard great things going in, and it was great fun. I'm not a massive Tomb Raider fan, only really playing the remakes and a few PS2 games, nor am I a particularly proficient puzzler, but I found the solutions to be a great mix of challenging, but clear. Nice shorter experience, which will be a common theme, but a great game to play regardless of going for the Platinum. In terms of the Platinum Trophy, there are a number of missable trophies, along with everyone's favourite collectible base trophies, which get surprisingly challenging to find, but overall, with a guide for those collectibles and bearing in mind those missable trophies, I managed to knock this one out in 4-5 to five hours. With a complete guide, I'm sure this is a 2 hour Platinum, but... I still want to play these games to enjoy them. Getting the answers given to me for a puzzle game just would have defeated the purpose. A few hours after I unlocked the Lara Croft Go Platinum, I'd go on to unlock Platinum number 3, Tacoma. Tacoma was one of those games I'd always seen the image floating around, whether I'd see the game on sale, on Game Pass, maybe through a YouTube recommendation, whatever it may be. When I was prepping for this challenge, that's how I picked some of these games. This game looks familiar, how's the Platinum? Achievable, 
Alright, let's finally check it out. I wasn't too sure what to expect going in, but I'm glad I finally checked Tacoma out because this game had me hooked in from the get-go. The story is really intriguing and has such a great atmosphere and trophy-wise, they seem to have fun with these. There are a number of missable trophies, but the game is short enough that if you need to do another playthrough, you're bringing your total time in-game to about two hours. Really short experience, so perfect for trophy and achievement hunters, but worth experiencing regardless. Two Platinums in one day feels great, I tell you what. The first Platinum of the day was a bit of a project, I'd been playing this one between editing and Platinuming the shorter games, and that was Platinum number 4, Tekken 7. I love Tekken. I grew up playing so much Tekken 3 with my brother and dad and going on to play Tekken 4, Tag Tournament and 5 with my cousins any chance we got. A lot of fond memories with the series. Unfortunately, I just haven't played it in years. I never played 6 and before this Platinum, I'd played maybe an hour of 7. Fighting game wise, I'd been getting my fix from Mortal Kombat and Injustice. I missed the series and that was the best part about going for this Platinum. It felt great to be playing Tekken again and overall I had a blast with this game. However, I did poorly optimize the order I went for trophies mainly because I wasn't sure if the online was still kicking. Now if the online was dead I needed to know ASAP before another trophy popped and I was finding games. They were just halfway across the world with awful ping. I tell you, getting these online trophies was the bane of my existence as for a couple of hours I tried to get all the online stuff done. I did this without relearning how to play Tekken, which in hindsight could have saved me a lot of time, but I did eventually do it and moved on to the more grind heavy stuff like the story mode, getting 50,000 damage in practice mode, getting to warrior rank, etc. These weren't too difficult, they just required a lot of repetition, especially the 50,000 damage. That took me at least 30 minutes to an hour alone. Again, I had fun though, it felt great to play some Tekken again, and Platinum wise, I'd say this is one of the easiest fighting game Platinums out there, right? Trophy Hunters, not a bad one to add to the collection. The second Platinum of the day was actually a prime example of why not every video idea works. Platinum number 5, Sonic Origins. I thought with the release of Sonic Frontiers, it'd be a great idea to go back and finally play the original games. I've never been a big fan of Sonic, only playing Rush and the racing games, so I wanted to try and understand the appeal, and Sonic Origins was conveniently on sale. The risk with this selection was as soon as I booted one of the three games up, a trophy would pop, so once I started, I was locked in. And I have to be honest, in the beginning, I was miserable. I was making my way through Sonic 1 and I just wasn't having a good time and pretty much scrapped the video idea from there. I don't want to go out of my way to poo poo a series that many love just because it's not for me. I'd rather focus my attention on games I love. However, I still had to push through and platinum the game. And this was a great example of the longer I played, the more I went on to enjoy it. Going from Sonic 1 to CD to 2 and finally 3, I just enjoyed them more and more and the platinum requirements weren't too bad either. Beat the games, unlocking items, collecting rings, killing enemies, it really was pretty straightforward thankfully. Sonic CD was probably my personal favourite of the collection but again 2 and 3 were fantastic too. And I really started to see the appeal to the series. Still not a huge Sonic fan but glad I finally knocked these games off the backlog and I'd be keen to try out some of their 3D titles if nothing else now. This is a pretty quick Platinum to boot and as long as you can get through each game, you've basically done the hard work for the Platinum requirements. This is another example of seeing a game's cover art what felt like all the time. Platinum number 6, Black the Fall. I've had my eye on this game for some time now because again I'd seen it in what felt like every sale and from what I could see it looked very Limbo or Inside-esque, which is pretty spot on. Black the Fall, much like Inside in particular, is a really short experience, maybe 2 to 3 hours tops that is filled with intrigue, atmosphere, Soviet propaganda and this great world that you only learn more about through visuals. In terms of the Platinum, I do recommend a guide 
that is most trophies are messable. They aren't the most difficult such as sitting on this bike for a certain amount of time or finding hidden areas but if you miss them you'll need to start again which is always a bit of a pain. Short and sweet platinum though which for this challenge is always appreciated and I'm glad I finally checked this game out. If you enjoy games like Inside I'd recommend playing this one. Platinum number 7 was another decent time sink, but damn, was it worth it. Grim Fandango. I'd never played Grim Fandango before this video, but I am a big fan of Tim Schafer's games, and there has always been something about this game's art style that's made me want to try it out. Holy hell, this was an experience I struggled to put down. Whilst the movement and general gameplay did take me a little bit to get used to, and without a guide back in the day, I have no idea how you were supposed to figure out some of these puzzles. Again, I'm not great with puzzles, but damn, some of these solutions are the real deal. But this game's story, world, characters, and their charm had me from the jump. Whether it's Manny or Glottis to side characters like Lupe or Chipido, all of these characters are so memorable funny and likeable that it just further pulls you into this story and world. I cannot recommend Grim Fandango enough, it was by far one of the best experiences I had during this challenge and I'm so glad I finally played it. In terms of the Platinum, a lot of the trophies are missable but they just pertain to unlocking specific dialogue, so just keep talking and you should get most of them. I will say I did have my first panic attack of the challenge after not unlocking the Platinum during the credits, only to find I missed one dialogue trophy. Thankfully, it was a 10 minute fix through good saving, but I was worried. Outside of that, a pure joy to platinum and simply play. This Platinum took a little longer than expected and probably the first example of that estimated time I'd researched being dependent player to player. Platinum number 8, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. This game has always been on my radar, it looked really interesting, I don't mind a good walking sim if the story is there, and I have to say that the first playthrough was captivating. I was hooked in, I was piecing it all together, and by the end I was like, that was great, that was a worthwhile experience. Platinum wise, not so much. One thing I didn't expect to be doing as much as I ended up doing in this challenge is sitting around doing nothing. The amount of trophies I unlocked during this challenge for putting my controller down from anywhere from 2 minutes to half an hour. Now Rapture was on the shorter end of that, but there is a lot of stand and do nothing trophies that are just boring. I also experienced my first bug trophy of the challenge where I was trying to basically in my second playthrough smash through the rest of the trophies, but the shortcuts had to be done on their own without doing anything else, forcing another playthrough. And by the end, just walking annoyed me. Even though overall three playthroughs took me around five hours, I just ended up loathing this Platinum experience. Game wise, I recommend giving it a try. Platinum wise, personally the first example of downgrading an experience. What? the hell happened. Just 8 Platinums to my name and officially passed the halfway point. I was stressing, I'm not gonna lie, because whilst I'd been playing games in this time, working on that Borderlands video had taken up a lot of my time, but also just general procrastination up to this point. I needed to get my butt into gear, and boy did I start today. Platinum number 9 is gonna seem like a bit of a joke, but we have Goosebumps the game. A meh sort of game, but at this point it's coming up to Halloween and I do have a soft spot for Goosebumps. It's not a terrible game, it's not overly enjoyable, but it's sort of just whatever. A nice and easy point and click adventure that at the very least I do love all the references to Goosebumps stories within. Platinum wise, it took me roughly 3 hours to complete, with the main struggle being to complete the game in under 175 turns I think it is. Not overly difficult, but definitely a trophy best held for last once you know the layout and puzzles. Do I recommend this Platinum? Not really. Do I recommend playing the game? Again, not really, but it is short if you're curious and love easy Platinums, which at this point we definitely needed. 
Platinum number 10 was another short journey to Platinum, but one I'm a lot more happy with, and that is Insomnus. Insomnus was a game I stumbled upon when looking through the various sales that I hadn't really heard about beforehand, but really intrigued me going in. It's the spooky season, let's complete some spooky games, and Insomnus was really enjoyable. The scares do wear off quite quickly, but the atmosphere, the story, and the visuals do make for a quality experience. I recommend checking it out if you see it on sale. Platinum wise, this was the shortest to date, taking a whopping 50 minutes with the help of save scumming to unlock both endings. Easy Platinum, but quality game that I recommend both people looking to get some trophies and a good haunted house experience. Platinum number 11 was another game I hadn't really heard of until finding it on sale, so much so I didn't realise it was actually a sequel, Darker Skies. First of all, I definitely need to try out Greyer Skies after this, because Darker Skies was Another really enjoyable experience. Yes, it is a bit clunky mechanically and another 2-3 to three hour platinum, but I just really had a blast with this game and that just comes down to the world and atmosphere. Set after the War of the Worlds, this unsettling atmosphere is draped over this whole game and it's captivating. Another game I recommend trying out, platinum or not, but considering 100% only means tracking 3 missable trophies, you may as well go for the platinum, right? Platinum number 12, once again on sale and I hadn't heard of it before either, but a game looking to capture and throw back to the early PS1 era, back to 1995. I grew up playing the PS1 and so I think like many others, I'm incredibly nostalgic for that sort of janky graphical style and that's how 1995 hooked me in got me to try it out. Control wise, this game is incredibly clunky and the visuals are a little rough around the edges, but this was a real blast from the past and was a fun ride regardless. I think nostalgia for the PS1 is going to have a lot of say in whether you enjoy this game or not, but for me it was interesting enough story wise and gameplay wise was such a cool blast from the past that I really had a good time with this game. It's only about an hour long platinum with a really straightforward trophy list, so great for trophy hunters and a worthwhile experience for those PS1 kids out there. Platinum number 13 and the last platinum of this insane day, Batman The Telltale Series. Delivered a rousing speech. Once again, Telltale games are pretty straightforward. Just play the game and you've got the platinum, so not much to talk about there. But I played some of the game to get some footage for the Borderlands video, which unlocked some trophies and so I had to platinum it. And this game is great. I don't think it's in Telltale's top three, that being Borderlands, The Walking Dead, and The Wolf Among Us, but it's a great Batman and Bruce Wayne story that is well worth playing and probably has the most gameplay of the Telltale games, if that's usually a stickler for you. I still need to play Season 2, that's been on the backlog for too long now. After such a massive day yesterday, I did take it a little easier today. I did get Platinum number 14, but my opinions on this one might be a little controversial. Telltale's Game of Thrones. Platinum wise, you know what it is. Game wise, this has always been one of my least favourite Telltale experiences, but I never really knew why until I replayed the game today. I cannot stand how many assholes are in Game of Thrones. I think it's a phenomenal show with incredibly well written characters, but as a viewer, I just hate watching that many unlikable characters, and that's why I've never gotten past season 3 of the show. The game has just as many unlikable characters, but the problem is it relies on multiple seasons to get that payoff of these characters dying. And since this is a one and done IP, it doesn't get any of that satisfaction. Not to mention, it's the longest Telltale game, taking me around 13 hours to get through, and add it all up, I just had a miserable time with this game. I wanted to give the game a second chance, and I will admit, there are some tough choices to be made here. Maybe with more seasons, it could have improved, but as is, still a bottom tier Telltale game in my opinion, and too much time spent with douchebags for my liking. Platinum number 15 thankfully corrected the course after the last game and ended up being the best surprise of this challenge so far, and that is Deliver Us the Moon. 
This game was spectacular. Whether it's the visuals, the story, the subject matter, or simply the high level immersion, Deliver Us the Moon had me by the balls from the very beginning and didn't let go. I cannot recommend giving this game a go more. I am now so excited to play Deliver Us Mars next year. I'm hyped. Platinum wise, there are a lot of missable trophies and a 30 minute wait and do nothing trophy, which well, lame. But the rest of the trophies do come quite naturally if you're as invested as I was and loved exploring the various locations as it's a lot of fine collectibles or finish given stories. Platinum or not, play this game, the immersion alone is incredible and this is an experience I won't soon forget. The second Platinum of the day, Platinum number 16, was an absolute childhood classic. Ape Escape. Growing up on the PS1, you better believe I played me a lot of Ape Escape, but I haven't touched the series in a long, long time, and with a simple Platinum, that was all the excuse I needed to come back to this gem. This was childhood bliss, honestly. Yes, the controls take some time to get used to, but once I got over that hurdle, this was a go back in time, turn your brain off, and catch some monkeys type of experience that was a pure joy to platinum. Highly recommend going back and playing Ape Escape, it's a blast to this day, and going for the platinum just requires catching an easy 100 monkeys and getting some coins, and you're good. Platinum number 17 is simply just a beautiful game. Spirits of the North. As someone who has studied visual art through further education, a quick way to get me to pay attention or at least pique my interest in a game I may know nothing about is with a unique art style. Spirit of the North visually is gorgeous. The colours all have a great pop to them, but the colour palette is minimal, allowing for the developers to tell a story through colour and visuals alone. That's impressive, and a big reason why I found myself so invested in Spirit's story and world. The gameplay is really simple, and the objectives are straightforward, but the experience was almost magical, simply from a visual perspective. In terms of the Platinum, it's pretty straightforward. The only tedious part is in the end, you need to find all these spirits in a massive space that are all on the move, which can be easy to miss one or two, and that inflates the overall time from two to three hours. But outside of that, this was an all around great experience that whilst may not be for everyone, is a quick platinum tied to a beautiful visual journey. Platinum number 18 is going to sound like a joke, but I'll explain my reasoning. Crazy Chicken Cart 2. Does anyone else remember this damn chicken or is it just me? I saw this game amongst one of the sales this month and immediately it unlocked a part of my memory I'd long suppressed. For what I would learn was for good reason. I saw the platinum time was short and thought, you know what, this would be a funny one to platinum. How wrong I was. This was three hours of pure torture. Winning a race on each level is no issue. The problem is playing 100 races overall and losing 50 of them for whatever reason. The driving's jank, the races are unbalanced, and the quickest way to grind these trophies is with this map that can be beaten in 50 seconds. Like, why encourage losing? You have the same result for just playing 100 races. That means you can lose, but still encourage winning. I wanted this to be dumb fun, but instead I just feel like a dumb f Thankfully, Platinum number 19 was much better. A Tale of Paper. A game very similar to Little Nightmares, just without the horror or the creep factor, which I understand is sort of a lot of Little Nightmares, but you know what I mean. This game has such a beautiful story with simple platforming and some cool transformation mechanics. It's not revolutionary, but it's just a simple beauty that had me having a good time with the game. The Platinum is filled with missable trophies, but this is a short Platinum journey, taking me about an hour and a half. I will say trophy wise it is refreshing to have objectives that encourage doing something as opposed to just collecting so many items or sit around and do bugger all. These were fun trophies to go after and overall a game that before today I'd not heard of that I'm glad I gave a go. Platinum number 20 I've had my eye on since it released in 2018 because it just looked like some good old simple wholesome fun. Donut County. I was looking forward to finally playing this game and it was exactly the experience I expected. Simple premise, visually unique, 
and short and sweet. The perfect experience for this type of challenge. Suck things into a hole to make hole bigger. That's the game, and it sounds simple, but it's got such a charm to it that I was glued to my seat for the couple of hours it took to Platinum. It's just a very satisfying game, and the trophies are again, really simple, but heavily gameplay oriented, which I appreciate. They're fun to go after, which cannot be said for a lot of these games. I highly recommend checking out Donut County, Platinum or not, this is just pure, simple fun. Platinum number 21 was a game that somehow I'd never played before, but always looked like a fun goof. Goat Simulator. Simultaneously the most fun and most infuriated I've been and had this entire challenge, simply due to one trophy. That god awful Flappy Bird trophy. I get it, Flappy Bird was awful, funny meme to have it here. The problem is, it's not fair. All you need is to get 10 points and the amount of times I had a run unfairly taken from me. I mean, look at the space here. How is that a fail? It made me want to break my controller and easily ruined what to that point was just dumb fun and an easy recommend for a platinum. It made me forego the DLC because technically, I just need that platinum for this challenge, despite originally going to 100% the game. That's how much one trophy ruined my overall experience. Goat Simulator is a goofy but fun game, 100% and platinum is another story. Platinum number 22 was another highlight of this whole challenge as we headed back into space and completed Moons of Madness. I remember keeping my eye on this game before release, but sort of lost track of it until now, seeing it in the PS catalogue or on sale, I can't exactly remember, but I immediately wanted to finally give the game a go, and wow, this is a great cosmic horror romp on Mars. Whilst not the scariest title with predictable scares, it is really compelling regardless. The atmosphere is incredible, the story is interesting, and you easily find yourself sinking into this role, and by the end, I just found myself adoring this whole journey. The Platinum only contains a few missable trophies as well, so if you know what they are going in, you can go in without a complete guide, no dramas, and get this Platinum in one playthrough. Another recommendation, Trophy Hunter or not, this is a quality experience that's worth playing. We were finally all caught up. After a disastrous start, I was smashing through these Platinums and really finding my rhythm, which felt amazing, not gonna lie. Platinum number 23 was a game that was a big reason I bought the PS5 in the first place, that for whatever reason, I didn't play until today. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Ratchet and Clank is one of the PlayStation's finest. It's a series I love, but it's been six years since I've played any of the games, and so Rift Apart was just perfect. I think everyone knows this game is incredible, that's no secret, but much like Tekken, it just felt great to be playing a Ratchet and Clank game again. I love these characters, the gameplay mechanics new and old are fantastic, and in terms of a platinum, it's a lot of collecting and getting kills with certain guns. It's straightforward, but again, really heavily gameplay oriented, which I expect nothing less for the series, and damn, does it feel good to have a Ratchet and Clank platinum? Might have to do some more of those sooner rather than later. If you have a PS5, you owe it to yourself to play Rift Apart. You listening to me, Aiden? You can now reborrow the game, and you better play it this time, okay? Okay, hear me out for platinum number 24, Storm Boy. Trophy Hunters may be aware of this game as the game that takes a whopping 20 minutes to platinum, and I'll be honest, this isn't a platinum I'm particularly proud of because it is so easy. But as a game, this is simply beautiful. Storm Boy is an Australian classic, and this experience that cost me just a couple of bucks was an emotional roller coaster. Play it. I don't care if you're after a quick and easy platinum, Storm Boy is worth playing, and it's not a shameful platinum because as an experience, it's just beautiful. Yes, it's a little short and the platinum is basically a given, but I seriously recommend looking into this one if not just the story in general. Platinum number 25 was the perfect game to complete for Halloween. Pumpkin Jack. Bit of medieval, bit of nightmare before Christmas, 
bit of fun. It's not as good as a medieval for example with a bit too much gimmick to the bosses and levels, but it's got that childhood platformer vibe which I am absolutely nostalgic for. The aesthetic just made for a prime Halloween game for me and with a short 4-5 to five hour platinum this was the perfect experience for this challenge. Not really much else to say if you like yourself some medieval or a throwback to older platformers, Pumpkin Jack should be right up your alley. Platinum wise outside of the unmissables it's just just about finding all the skulls and buying the costumes. Nothing too difficult, just be careful about quitting out mid-area. I did have to go back and recollect some skulls after stopping. Platinum number 26 is a game that people seem to be quite mixed on, but I personally loved it, and that is the medium. A little late for Halloween, but the medium had me utterly captivated. Artistically, this game is stunning. I get a lot of Wayne Barlow vibes from this world that had me so intrigued by this story, and whilst gameplay-wise it's nothing special, I had a great time making my way through this psychological thriller. Horror-wise, it's again, not the scariest, but it definitely is tense and unsettling, and a game that I recommend trying out if nothing else. Now, Platinum-wise, this was a scary prospect, because it's a lot of collecting and if you mess up you're replaying the entire game. Thankfully this was smooth sailing for me with the help of a guide and carefully keeping track but just be careful, replaying a game for one mistake is not what you want. Platinum or not though, I recommend giving the game a chance, I had a great time with it personally and I'm glad I finally played it. Platinum number 27 I thought was going to take a lot longer than it ended up taking and that is Maneater. Now to be fair, I'd already completed the game on my Xbox at release, so I knew the general path to Platinum going in, but I just smashed through this game. Maneater is just good, simple fun. It's unique, it doesn't take itself too seriously, and in general, it's just fun to be a shark grow from this little almost helpless pup to the ocean's apex predator and get your revenge on all the creatures giving you grief along the way. The platinum is really simple, just complete each zone, get all the goodies and make sure you're taking out those bounty hunters and you'll get this platinum in no time. Personally it took me around 7 hours to complete and I had a blast from start to finish. Again, no DLC today just because of the time restraint but I will go back and do that because the game's just good fun. Highly recommend playing Maneater. Platinum 28 is one of my guilty pleasures that may surprise you. Murdered Soul Suspect. Soul Suspect may not be a perfect game, it may not even be a great game, but I just love being this ghost detective and solving the mystery of my own death. The game's definitely B grade, but it's just fun to play, what else can I say? The enemy encounters may be brainless, but the detective work is good fun. Not LA Noir levels, but still fun enough. In terms of the Platinum, it is a lot of collecting, like most of the trophies are to do with collectibles, but I actually think it fits with this type of game really well, since you're searching the environment a lot as is. If you're naturally exploring, this is a simple Platinum, and a game I recommend checking out if you like a bit of B grade content every now and again. Okay, trust me, I'm not trying to cheese this challenge. Platinum number 29, we have Ghost of Tsushima, PS5. Yes, I downloaded the PS5 version of the game. Yes, I downloaded my PS4 save file. Yes, the Platinum took me two minutes. Okay, let me explain. I want to replay Ghost of Tsushima with all the new bells and whistles, and I will do that. In fact, since this challenge I started checking out the Legends mode and started New Game Plus. However, I needed more time to Platinum the last game on my list. I wanted to end with a challenge, and as is, I need more time, so I cheesed a Platinum to make it happen. Ghost of Tsushima is incredible though, easily 2020's best game, and a game that I now have two Platinums for, so look at me go. The final day. 24 hours to go and I was going to finally be finished with this challenge. I had to end with a bang, but I needed to be smart. I couldn't just play some hour long game and be done with it. That would be pretty lame and also... Well, I sort of ran out of those games anyway. I wanted to platinum something I was proud of. I loaded in Ghost Runner, quickly realised that ain't it for this challenge, though it is incredible, and decided that platinum number 30 
the finale to this challenge would be for a game that I adore. A game that is incredibly funny and fun to play. A game worth platinuming. But also a game that had the potential to take me between 10 to 20 hours and if I missed one of the many missable collectibles, it was over. There would be no way I could come back from that sort of mistake. The final game of this challenge was South Park The Stick of Truth. I know, probably not the game you were expecting, but damn, this series is fantastic. The Stick of Truth is simply a love letter to South Park, and a damn good game to boot. It's funny, it's filled with great easter eggs and references to iconic episodes. The gameplay is a lot of fun because it so heavily incorporates the humour into the turn-based combat. It's a great game that I highly recommend playing Platinum or not. The Platinum Trophy did have me worried though. Missable trophies are daunting and not to mention how many trophies are tied to ending the game a certain way. Playing the whole game without letting your buddies fall in combat, saving summons for specific encounters and moments. All of that tied with the fact that this is not a short game had me a little stressed going in. If only I knew the panic waiting for me by the end. With 4 hours left on the clock, I was just about done. I'd beaten the game, gone after all the collectibles, and grinded the combat trophies, I was all set to be done. Until that platinum trophy didn't pop. I was missing one piece of equipment after 12 hours of work. My heart dropped because whilst not all collectibles are forever missable, some are. And if it was tied to a mission, I was screwed. Thankfully, I had just missed one in the open world. I picked it up, the platinum trophy popped, and after 30 days, I was finished. With the 30 days all said and done, before I get to my final thoughts on this experience, I wanted to quickly hand out some awards for the good and the bad of this challenge. First off, let's go with the most common platinum I achieved. The basic bitch platinum, if you will. Goes to Stormboy. No real shocker here, it is a gimme platinum coming in at a whopping 92% platinum rate. Again, I really recommend this game, basic platinum though. On the flip side, the rarest platinum I achieved came in at a nice and slim 2.6% and that was for Tekken 7. I'm quite proud of this one as a lifelong Tekken fan and for a fighting game this is a platinum journey that is super straightforward and good fun. The most fun platinum to achieve I think is a tie between Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart and South Park The Stick of Truth. Both of these games I recommend playing platinum or not but they're such great games that going for that platinum and experiencing everything they have to offer was a no-brainer and the time just flew by honestly. The platinum trophy I despised going for was easily Crazy Chicken Cart 2. That was the longest three hours of my life and from the first trophy I knew I had made a mistake. The platinum trophy that ruined the experience for me personally was Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Really beautiful game and that first playthrough was incredible but the longer you play and the more annoying trophies you go for the more I just began to despise the game. Play the game, skip the platinum. The platinum trophy that saved the experience is easily Sonic Origins. I cannot describe how much I wanted to give up on this game, but through pushing onwards, playing more of the games and trophy hunting, I grew to really look forward to playing this collection. And that's thanks to the platinum trophy pushing me to keep playing. Last but not least, my favorite platinum of the entire challenge has to go to Deliver Us the Moon. Again, this game caught me by surprise, but wow did I just love being in this world and going for this platinum. There are some annoying trophies like sitting around on the moon doing bugger all, but the experience itself and getting this platinum was my favourite of the entire challenge. Close contender though is Grim Fandango. That game is phenomenal. So, after all of this, what are some of the lessons and learnings I came away with? Well, first and foremost, this challenge reaffirmed that inkling I had when going for the Spider-Man Platinum, and that is, the itch is officially back. Getting these Platinums was such a rush, and I really did enjoy this whole process. But on the flip side, this challenge was a lot more mentally taxing than I had ever anticipated. Sure, you could look at this video as 30 easy platinum trophies, but that's not really the point. Sure, I definitely could have optimized my early days a lot better, allowing for more lengthy experiences, but I don't think there is any way of avoiding some form of burnout that comes along with this challenge. I was so ready to be done with this challenge, even though I loved the games I was platinuming in the process. There's just no 
good time to smell the roses, enjoy the accomplishment of that grand prize. It's more like, that was cool, alright, what next? Don't get me wrong, I love that feeling of achieving a platinum, but what I really wanted to do was accomplish some tough or at least lengthy platinums. Again, it gave me the itch to revisit games and finally platinum them like God of War, Assassin's Creed, Kingdom Hearts, Wolfenstein, Crash Bandicoot, Call of Duty, I mean the list goes on and on. By the end of this I was ready to move on to bigger projects and harder platinums and you know, space them out a little more. But hey, at the end of the day this challenge helped me achieve all that I wanted to going in. I played a bunch of games, up to my platinums to almost 40, and made a video all in the same process and not only that, but found that love and appreciation for trophy and achievement hunting and hunters once again. Thank you all so much for watching the video, I know this was a much different video than usual but I just wanted to try my hand at this challenge and take you guys along the journey with me. If you did enjoy make sure to leave it a like because it helps let me know that you enjoyed yourself, comment below your thoughts on trophy or achievement hunting and if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Shout out to the channel members Infamous Set Hellfire featuring Gagiano, Christian Vargare, Cloud Connection, Cynical D and Conquer for that extra level of support I truly do appreciate. It. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, go give my socials a follow if you fancy, at Mayor Hair Bear, and I'll catch you all in the next video.